Joshua. Chapter number one and verses number two and three. Joshua one, two, and three. It reads, Moses, my servant, is dead. Ooh, we. Now, therefore, <laughs> I like therefores. I love therefores. They, they, therefore means you need, to, you need to pay attention to what came before. <laughs> therefore means as a consequence of what was said before. Because Moses is dead, therefore, arise. Good God Almighty, somebody needs to rise today. Arise, go over. <laughs> Somebody's have crossing over. Go over this Jordan. You and all these people. So, so uh, God was talking to Joshua. Let me say it another way. God was talking to the pastor. He was talking to the pastor. God talked to me and he gave me exactly this verse. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, Joshua, he said, arise. Go over this Jordan. You and all these people. In other words, I'm talking to you, Pastor Tucker. I'm talking to you, Pastor Walter, and I'm talking to you about the people that you pastor, the people who are under your authority, under your stewardship. He said, you and all these people, somebody said, he's talking about us. He said, he said, I want you to go over to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot will tr tread or trod. In other words, every place you step, every place you go, he said, uh, uh, well, you tread upon, I have given you as I said to Moses. In other words, I'm telling you this today, Joshua, but really I'm repeating what I already said before. I actually told Moses this before, and I'm just reiterating, I'm just restating, I'm just reaffirming what I already said, because my word shall never return unto me. Come on, somebody. Boy, it shall prosper where I sent it. It shall accomplish what I sent it to do. Somebody say, go ahead, Jesus. I mean, I like God. God said that. When I say something, it's going to happen. When I say something, it's going to come to pass. I, I like Jesus. He, he, ain't no, he, ain't no, he ain't no whip. He ain't no wuss. He ain't playing around. He's like, look, when I speak something, it's coming to pass. Good God Almighty. That's, that's, somebody say, that's the God I serve. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Church, I want you to know I'm teaching from the life, blessing, life, building, life, bettering series. And it is entitled, We're Taking the land. Come on, church. We're taking the land. Did you hear what I said? Someone say it with me. Say, we're taking the land. Taking say it again. Say, we're taking the land. Taking I'm telling you, good is the enemy of best. It really is, because I'm telling you, I was excited about the message I had. I don't know when I'm going to bring that one out, but it's in the freezer right now. But I was excited about the second message. But when God spoke this, he said, son, he said, it, it, it's nothing wrong with those messages. He says, but I need your people to receive, to stay. He said, I need you to stay in the prophetic. And I need your people to go right with you. Because I'm not just giving you a message. I'm, I'm giving you a manifestation. I'm telling you what is happening and what's going to happen. This is not just another feel-good message. God is talking to us about where we are and what is getting ready to happen. Somebody say, in his word, won't return void. Give him another hand clap right there. It will not return void. While you were standing up here, Pastor Robin, you said something that I, I know was by the Spirit, but... You, you caught it. You caught it. That's why I shared these things with you before. You caught it. You said, God is, watch this. You said, God is bringing us, you said, God has brought us out. God has brought us through. And God is going to bring us to. God has brought us out. God has brought us through. And God has brought us to. See, see what I want you to know in this message, we're taking the land, is that the setting of this message uh, deals with actually the greatest uh, event 
uh, in the Old Testament. The greatest event in the Old Testament. And the greatest event in the Old Testament was the deliverance of God's people. Now, some might say, well, the greatest event in the Old Testament. No, no, no. It was, it was Noah and it was the repopulation of the earth and all that. But that was just a family. Did you hear me? That wasn't a nation. The greatest event of the Old Testament was, think about it, three million people were in slavery for 430 years and God had promised to, come on Pastor Rob, to bring them out, to bring them through, and to bring them to. Yeah, no. See, the problem is, oh there it is, go on Holy Ghost, good is the enemy of the best. Good is when you've been captive to get out. Oh, that's good. Oh, I've been a prisoner for a long time. Oh, I finally got out of prison. Yeah, but there's a whole lot of folk got out of prison. Well, yeah. and, and, and the statistics say within uh, three years, 75% of them go back. It's called recidivism. Did you hear me? Yeah. People get out, people go back in. Well, I got another one for you. People get out, they get out, but but they, they're in prison outside. They get out, but they go back to the same old thing, lying, cheating, stealing, and getting high. And, they, and they, now they're not in a prison behind the walls, but they're in another type of prison. Right. Amen? Amen? And some folks that never went in, they're in prison. Amen? But see, God was here real clear. He said, I want to bring you out. Then I want to bring you through. Because when they got out of Egypt, which was the prison, which actually Egypt is a type of the world, Egypt is a type of the world. Pharaoh is a type of who? The devil. And Moses is a type of Christ. So Christ is not just trying to bring you out of prison or the world just to set you out there like, like having a baby. And, and like, like, like a show I was just watching, the, 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 you know, you have a baby and you take the baby and say, I don't want this baby. What you gonna do? Leave it at the fire department? That ain't right. That's not right. I mean, it's better than, you know, leaving in a trash can or something, but, but, but that's not, but good is not, good is the enemy of best. Yeah. The best is that you take responsibility for your actions and raise that baby. Amen to God. <laughs> Nobody tell you that you knew what the possibilities were when you laid down, but, 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 at, but at least by all means, you know, if, if, if nothing else, yeah, take the baby to the fire bar. But, but the point is that God is not trying to birth you or deliver you and leave you. Right. He's not just trying to bring you out. He's trying to bring you through and bring you to. Yeah. He's trying to get you to somewhere. In, in other words, God is not just trying to deliver you from something. He's trying to deliver you into something. And what is that? It's a land that he has promised. Amen. It's, 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 you, and that's what the problem is. Too many Christians stop at salvation. Y'all didn't hear me today. Yeah, it should have been a shout right there. Because what I just said was a, that was a, what a man said, you dropped a bomb on me. That was a bomb right there. I said, too many Christians think that salvation is the finish line. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I got saved. You know, saved, the word saved literally means delivered. Thank you, Jesus. I got delivered. Praise God. But I got news for you. God did not deliver you just to leave you or to let you think that that was the end. That was the all in all. He delivered you from so that he could deliver you into. Right. Did you see? Yeah. He, it was good. It was good that he delivered them from slavery. But the best was that they entered into the promised land and took the land. Can I, can I get an amen, somebody? Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. You're up here stopping it. Ever since you got saved, it, oh, thank the Lord I'm saved. Ain't trying to get nobody else saved. Ain't trying to disciple. You didn't look to get disciple and haven't discipled anybody else. That's not, that's, not, that's not God's best. It's good. You got a place reserved in heaven. But what about... What about down here? And even the eternal blessings in heaven once you get up there. What you do between now and the time you go is going to determine whether or not you live the abundant life here and whether or not you have abundant blessings up there. You choose. 
It's up to you. Now, you got a place reserved if you're born again. That's great. That's good. But it ain't the best. So listen, let's look at this. To the word take. What are we talking about today? We're what? We're taking the land. We're taking the land. We're taking the land. Uh, Joseph, come here a second, please. Come here a second. Stand right here. The word take means to lay hold of. It means to lay hold of. It means to get, to obtain. Now, you got to get this. God says, I have given you the land. Did he not say that? He said, the land I promised you, the land I've given you. And so when you give something to somebody, it's a gift, right? Yeah. But a gift is no good unless you take it. It's no good unless you grab hold to it, unless you lay hold to it. If I say, Joseph, he, here's the gift. I can, look, I can put it out here like this. If he keeps his hands down by his side, I can, I can, I can offer to him all, if you keep your hands down by your side, I can offer to him. I can offer it to him all day long. What's happening? I'm offering, but ain't, ain't nothing happening. Because it, and this is exactly why a lot of folk are not saved. Jesus already paid the price for everybody's sin. And he offers them, he, he's offering him to himself, his blood to them. God the Father is offering Jesus to them. But if they don't take it, then they have not obtained it. So now take it. Now, he takes the gift. It was a gift, it was a promise, but he had to take it. There's God's part and our part. Somebody say, take the land. Thank you, sir. Let's give him a big hand. Amen, amen, praise the Lord. To take means to lay hold of. It means to get, to obtain. And then the land, now watch this, the land is something God has promised. Now, now this is very important now. This is very important now. The land is something God has promised. God promised a land, a physical, natural land uh, to these people who were the sons of Jacob, the sons of Israel, and then they were called Israelites, and he promised this land to them that we now know as Israel. He promised it to them, but just like the example I gave you where Initially, I was offering the book to the young man and he didn't take it. The people that he brought out of bondage and slavery, everybody in that generation except two, somebody say except two, except two. did not take it. They did not take it. They did not, the Bible says in the New Testament, they did not mix the promise with faith. In other words, they did not by faith receive it. God had said it. It's like that book that I was just offering him. That book was like the title deed to the land, to the house, to the, to the, to the, uh, it was like a certificate to a bank account. It was like a certificate to some, uh, some money or, or title deed to the house or title deed to the car that you, that God promised you and God's telling you is yours. You don't really see it physically, but he's telling you it's yours. Now he said, now just take this by faith, and, and, and you wouldn't take it. And God said, okay, well, there's nothing I can do about it. You missed out. And they all missed out except two. Joshua and Caleb, right? Somebody said, just two. just two. And that whole generation died off, and then God raised up another generation. And, and I, you know what's interesting? Now that I think about this, I'm thinking that when God raised this other generation, he, you know, 40 years went by, and all of them died out who, who saw the land, but they wouldn't take it. See, there's a real important point I'm trying to get here, and I really got to drive this home if you don't get it. The people that God promised the land to, 12 people went out to scout out the land, right? Ten, two said, it's flowing with milk and honey, it's abundant. God said, it's, it's exactly what God said. Two of them said, eh, there's giants in the land. Did you, wait a minute now. Two focused on the fruit, the milk, and the honey. Ten focused on the giants. What you gonna focus on? What, what is your focus today? This is a very important point. What is your focus today? 
Whenever God gives you a promise, there's always these two uh, competing uh, spirits and voices. And they're both competing with you to, to see what you're going to focus on. Both things were true. There was milk and honey and breakthrough in the land. Somebody say what God said. What God said. But here comes a surprise. There's giants in the land too. In fact, this is really interesting. Uh, the land, we always focus on the fact that there were giants in the land. There were a lot of inhabitants in the land. Y'all read that, right? So there were some ites in the land. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what I say? When I say ites, his ites, your ites, they ites, Jebusites, parasites. I mean, they were all parasites. There were all these ites in the land. So it's like, wait a minute, God. Why would you promise us and offer us a land that's inhabited? It's almost like, <laughs> wow. It's like this country. <laughs> they, they said, they said, they said, this land is our land. They said, but people live here, right? They're talking about this. They just took it. You know, you know that's part of the deletion of that's part of the revisionist history. That's why they try to correct the, the history books now, right? Y'all know that, right? This is a big movement to correct and revise history. That's why they, you know, we, we're talking about we don't use the name Indians anymore. We use what is the operative name we're using? Indigenous people. What does that mean? They was here before you got here. Did y'all hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? They was here before you got here. This was they land. So, but in this particular case, all the ites were in the land. But God, now this is this is a good thing because he's sovereign. He said, it's not man. He said, I'm giving this to get turn that back to the original text. Let me look at this. I want you to see this. I want you to see the original text. Here we go. No, that was it. That was it right there. Okay, watch this. He says in verse 2, he says, Go over this Jordan. You and all these people to the land, what? Which I am giving to them. In other words, oh, then he says it again in verse 3. Do you see that? He repeats. He says, everywhere the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have what? Given you. Somebody say, given you. God was emphasizing a very interesting point. He was basically saying that even though there are people there are inhabitants in the land I, the sovereign Lord, have given you the land. Don't worry about, okay, here's what God is really trying to tell you. Don't focus on the opposition. Focus on the proposition. Y'all not hear me today. Don't you, I, he said, don't, I, I, don't, don't, don't you worry about the opposition. Don't you worry about the devil. Don't you worry about what's standing against you. He says, just, just remember what I said is already given to you. Y'all yeah, here today. Yeah, yeah. Don't focus on what's, 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 what's standing against you. Just remember what I have already given you and spoken to you. Now there's Christianity 101. Yeah, it's like, go back to what I keep teaching y'all. Yeah, God, but, no, 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 no. Don't you put a comma where God put a period. God said, this is your land, and this is your time, and you sitting up there talking about, yeah, but. The only place you put a comma is when the, when the devil's talking. The devil said, now you know I got giants in the land. And you know there's some folk living there. You know they have, listen, when my son has a house right now, okay, uh, uh, and, and and when he got that house, there was people living in that house. They were squatters, and they were living. I mean, not only were they living in there, they had more stuff than than uh, Sanford and Son. I mean, they had stuff all over. I mean, they had about twenty folk living up in that place. But he said that God told him to buy that house, and I said, Well, if God told you to buy that house, then He's giving it to you. And he had to go through hell, through the legal channels, to get that house. Because at the time, you know, they had a, 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 a moratorium on evictions. During COVID and everything, y'all know what I'm talking about. But the whole point was, it was a moratorium on evictions of tenants. They weren't tenants. 
They were squatters. But they lied and said they had a cop, a deed, they had, you know. And the guy who was the former owner, he was dead. So it was a he said, he said case. But how many of you know the devil said, you can't have this house, they're in it. Now that's where you put a comma. You say, yeah, they're in there. Yeah, they've been in there for two years. Yeah, they got 20 people living in there. Yeah, they got people, you know, when I come in, they got the folk looking like, the, you know, the, 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 the mob. You know, like, don't you come to this house. We're going to kill you. He said, somebody say, but God. He living in that house right now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What's the Lord saying? He said, he said, I get, get this now. I've given it to you, but you got to take it. Yeah. Oh, 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 I wish somebody get this today. Yeah. I've given you a beautiful marriage, yeah. but you got to take it. Yeah. I've given you health. Mm -hmm. Didn't my word say that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you yeah. were healed? Yeah. You yeah. are healed. I don't see it where it says you're going to be healed. It says you oh. were healed. Uh, uh, Isaiah 53 5 says you are healed. 1 Peter 2 24 says you were healed. So that means that God has given you help. But you got to fight for it. Come on, church. Give God some praise. You're going to have to take it. You're going to have to take it. You're going to have to lay hold on it. And yeah, there's some enemies, but you don't have to worry about them. I want you to know that this message today is for all those who are here now. What do I mean who are here now? I'm talking about anybody who's listening to this message with the mindset that this is their church. I don't care whether you filled out uh, uh, a new member's form or not. That's not important. What's important is, I mean, we like you to do that, but what's important is if you know that God is speaking to you through this ministry, this pastor, and the ministers on this staff. And we got some good ministers from, from co-pastor to the other minister. Come on, let's, let's give it up for Whoa, we got some good ministers here. You know, I could go away for six months and no, I don't want to do that. But I could. But I could. And they would just be like knocking it out the park because we have good people. We really do. But, but here's the point. If, if you glean from this ministry that this message is for you, it is for people who, watch this now, it is for those who started with us and who've been with us for quite a while now. Because along the way, there's some folk who, who, who um, I, I'm going to say this symbolically, who died off in the wilderness. I ain't saying they're dead. But there's some folk who, who left us in the wilderness. How about that? When we were going through, remember, God brought us out, okay? He brought us out of, of another ministry. He even brought us out of the hotel. And he, and, and, and he brought us to this place. But along the way, some people that I, I thought, co-pastor thought, would be here, they're not here. And some of y'all who've been here a lot, wow, you know what I'm talking about. You said, wow. What happened to so-and-so? People you always, well, what happened to so-and-so? You know what? That's a really good point. Uh, when God is taking us through, I know that it's uh, only, uh, it only makes sense when you say to yourself, what happened to so-and-so because we have good hearts? But stay focused. Stay focused. Don't focus on so much who's not here. Focus on who is here. Praise the Lord. Focus on who's here. Because there's some people who are here right here that you need to call. There's some people who are here right here before the day's out that you need to, you need to, I know we all trying to, you know, be socially distant, socially distant conscious and all that stuff. But with your wonderful mask on before you leave here today, you need to just say hi to somebody and say, hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? You okay? Amen. I'm going to give you a call this week. Because why? Because there's a real important reason that they're here. Same thing with you online. There's some people online right now. They couldn't be here physically today, but they're here. They're with us. They're saying, this is my church. And, and church, we need to reach in and reach out to one another, check on one another, and encourage and support one another in the name of Jesus. Can I get an amen and a whoo-whoo? Come on, somebody. 
Listen, listen. Uh, I, boy, I can, t I can tell this is going to be a great series. You know why? Because I haven't even gotten past page one. This is good stuff right here. But I, but I got to take my time to lay this foundation. What are we talking about today? We're talking about we're taking what? The land. The land. And what did we say the land was? The land, if I didn't say the land, was something God has promised to us. Now, I want you to get this. I want you to get this. The land is something God has promised to us. Uh, to us. Who's the us? Those who glean from this ministry. Some are physically here today. Some are not. Now, watch this now. In the, in the Old Testament, when God was talking to Joshua and the people, let me, let me go back to that foundation of the text. This is interesting. Look, he says, verse 2, arise, go over this Jordan. So, so notice the flow of God. Notice the flow. Those of you who are here can start to see, it's almost like the, the, the uh, uh, cloud by day and the fire by night. The pillar, the cloud by day and the fire by night. You know what I'm talking about, right? When God was guiding the people by the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. The last series was entitled, Your Restoration is Now. now. Notice what God is saying. It is now. And we're crossing over into the promised land now. Do you see what I'm talking about? Somebody say, we're crossing over. Now, here's what I want you to get. Here's what I want you to get. This is real interesting. Who crossed over? Who crossed over? It was two people from the prior generation. It was only two left. Joshua and Caleb, well, their families, their, their wives, children, whatever. And everybody else was of a, everybody else was, watch this, everybody else was 40 years up and 40 years old and under. Can I get an amen? Now within 40 years, there was an opportunity for another generation. In other words, if somebody had a child and because when did people start having children? What, 20s, 30s? And then for the most part, right? So you have Joshua and Caleb being the OGs, that generation. You have the 40 and under, or the people who are like in their 40s, 30 to 40. But then the people 30 to 40 had maybe some small children, right? So they were, so really what you had, the point I'm trying to make is you had like three generations and where there is a natural tendency in the world to have division within generations what God is saying here's who's crossing over a people who are one even though there's three generations church we're getting ready to cross over and we're going to have uh, uh, you know little babies we're going to have the youth we're going to have the adults. We're going to have the seniors. And, and those who remain and stick by the stuff are crossing over. Give God some praise. Those who remain. This is, a, this is how church is supposed to be. Every, every age group. And, and here's the beautiful thing. No intergenerational fighting. Well, y'all are over the hill. Y'all don't know nothing. Y'all are too young. You don't know nothing. You know how it is. The devil will try to cause intergenerational fighting. Division. Say amen. amen. But now they have seen the truth of God. And they said, no, we're together. Notice what he said. He said, you and all, and all, you and all this people. You got to remember who all the people were. They were, the, it was Joshua and Caleb and their families. That was it for that generation. That was gone. And then the next generation were 40 and under. But within that 40 and under, there were really two generations there. There was the there was the, the, the ones who were older, like between 30 and 40, who basically by that time had had some kids. And then there were those kids who were going to represent that next generation. Can I get an amen? He said, all of y'all going over. Say, they're all going over. Church, here's what I want you to get with my last few minutes. We said the word land means something God has promised. Here's what I want you to know. Here's another definition for that word land, land. It means some place we are to enter into. It's, it's a la land is not only something, but it's some place we are to enter into to enjoy the abundant life. Boy, that word sounds familiar, abundant life. Where have we heard that before? John 10, 10. 
See how the word of God is consistent? Jesus said, he said in John 10, 10, we always quote the B section. Sometimes we don't quote the A section. We don't quote the A section. He said, the A section says, the thief cometh but to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. What did I tell you? There's always going to be opposition in this world. There's going to be some plagues. There's going to be some earthquakes. There's going to be some racism. There's going to be some, you know, divisions, uh, social, economic, political divisions and stuff. If you focus on that, it will take you, it will destroy you. You might not be a racist, but if every day you get up and all you're focusing on is the racism that is, quote, arising and abounding in this country, it will destroy you. Yeah. I got news for you. In case you really didn't pick it up in the spirit, watch this now. There is really not more racism in this country than it used to be. It's just more racism being exposed in this country than it used to be. It's not, it's not more. See, okay, somebody say generations. See, see, it's a funny thing. I heard this preach. Come on, I'm getting great insight on this. How many of y'all ever heard of the, 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 the Moses generation and the Joshua generation? You ever heard people talk about that? And how many of you ever heard people say Joshua generation, the Joshua generation was the young people who came in and they, they were the young folk. Joshua was 86 years old when he took the land. What y'all talking about, the Joshua generation? That one, Joshua doesn't represent the youth generation. Joshua... You know, if there's anybody closer to the Joshua generation, although I'm not close to 86, but it would be likened unto me in the sense that I learned from some great apostles and bishops, and now as a leader, I'm bringing the people in underneath me who are parents and even grandparents. Amen? I mean, we got a lot of grandparents in this. Come on, grandparents. Get a shout out for the grandparents. Come on now. What, what I'm trying to tell you is, here, here's what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, that, that the devil is always busy. And when it says in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But then he says, but I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. What I'm trying to tell you is, that don't you focus on the racism that's in this country. Focus on the abundance that's in the kingdom. Because God promised it to you. He's going to give it to you. All you have to do is take it. What is the abundance that is in the kingdom? Oh, it's like what my wife said. It's true prosperity. It's not just material things. It's not just, it includes that, but if we know SMPM, spiritual, mental, physical, material, material is what? Is last. I, I don't mind material being in, 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 the, in the mix, but I got it in its right order. It's last place, because I tell you right now, like you said, if you don't have your health and strength, you ain't got nothing. I got news for you, health is wealth. And if you don't believe me, just keep getting old. You find out what I'm talking about. Health is wealth. And not only that, but it starts with spiritual health. You want to talk about health, you don't talk about wellness. You have to have spiritual wellness, then mental wellness, then physical wellness, and then lastly, guess what? The, the material wellness, it just all flows after that. It just all comes. Yeah. It all comes. So what, here's my main point. Joshua was like the OG generation, and that's how I see myself. Do you know why I say that? Is because I, I'm, people come up to me, man, brand new people come to me, Pastor, I saw you on TV. Yeah, you, you were on this thing, this documentary, and they were talking about the Rodney King and the verdict and, and the riots in Compton and all this stuff. Church, this pastor right here is living history. I, I, I was the mayor at that time. I was there. I, it, I'm not talking about what I read in a book. I'm not talking about what I saw in a documentary. I was there when the city almost burned down and told and told the people, uh, I don't care what y'all say, let the National Guard come in here. In fact, send them in here right now because we all getting ready to get burned up. Amen? What, what I'm trying to tell you is, here's the point. When Rodney King happened, 
April uh, 29, 1992, when it happened, and they 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 uh, filmed it and they caught it on video. We who were the Joshua generation, we the OGs who were there at the time, we said, finally, Lord, finally, they have they have, have recorded and shown how racist these people are, how they lied and beat and killing black men in the street. And we thought, hurrah, it's finally uncovered. This will never happen again because the cover's been taken off. Good God Almighty. No, y'all not hearing me today. I'm telling you, when I saw that in 1992, my first thought was, finally this thing is uncovered. And, 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 and now the, the light is shining and, and, and they gonna, it's going to cause these police officers to get right. There's been millions of videos since then. It's not stopping. It's increasing. It's not that it's increasing. It's that it's increasing in being exposed. It was happening all the time. People just didn't have cell phones with cameras on. They got cameras. They got cell phones now. You can, you can shoot a movie on. You get an iPhone now, you can shoot a movie on it. What am I trying to tell you? If that's your focus, and if you think for one minute that, that by, by you focusing on that every day, that's going to make the world better, that's going to stop people from being evil. No, no, no. The Bible says, in this world you shall have tribulation. He says, but, there it is right there, but be of good cheer, be of good courage, be of good courage. He said, I have overcome the world. And in me, you overcome too. Give God some praise. You overcome too. Don't focus on the giants. Focus on the fruit. God has told you that this is your day. We're taking the land. And the only thing you need to ask yourself is, and we're going to get into this next week, but it's going to be a great series. What is the fruit that God has promised you. It's one thing about this land that I thought was very interesting. He said, he says, back at the scripture, back at the text. He said, watch this now. He said, the land that I'm giving to, them, there it is. He says, arise and go over the Jordan. Now watch this. Joshua, you leave them. Pastor, Pastor Walter, you leave them. You and all the, you and all this people, you and all this people, this is for everybody who is under your leadership. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, that's, that's, that's powerful right there. That's the first thing you gotta ask yourself. Am I under Pastor Walton and Pastor Robert's leadership? Well, if you are, this message is for you. Now watch this. You and all these people, and go over to the land which I'm giving, watch this, and go over to the land which I'm giving to them. That's interesting, that's interesting. He knew that Joshua was only going to be there for a little while. It was yeah. really the land that God is giving to you all. Yeah. Now, I ain't trying to get up out of here earlier than I got to, but what I'm telling you is God is doing something and he's doing in 2012, December 7th, 2012 is when this church was founded and it was just It was just two people, me and her. Not my children, not my sister, not my mama, nobody. It was just me and my wife, Walter and Robert Tucker. These two people founded the church. And he says, the land which I'm giving to, notice he didn't say you all. He said to them. He was saying you and Caleb were the two that I use to bless everybody else. And I got news for you. When the time came for them to take this land, they said, it's interesting. It's really interesting. He said, scout out the land. Well, wait, 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 wait. You, I'm not talking about scouting out the land that they did 40 years before. 40 years ago, they scouted out the land. They sent in how many spies? 12. And how many had a good report? Two. Two. How many had an evil report? Ten. Ten. Now that it's time, now that the, the unbelievers died out 
And Joshua's in charge. And he's one of the two who were left from the original scouting. He said, scout out the land. And I found a very interesting last night. I got a good laugh out of this. I'm going to tell you I'm good. He sent in two. <laughs> he didn't send in no 12. He said, I, he said, I've been, I've seen that movie. Been there, done that. He said, I'm just sending in two. Two scouts. And they took the land. My time is up. And I thank you for your, he said, somebody say, just takes two. Somebody say, just takes two. Oh, baby, you just need one other person to agree with you. It just takes two. All you need, the Bible says, if any two on earth shall agree as touching. You better know it. Matthew 18, 19. Come on, somebody. He said, if any two on earth shall agree. Somebody said, I just need two. I just need one other person. If any two on earth shall agree. Do you realize what that means? If you can just get one other person. That's why the devil comes so strong against marriages. Because if you and if you're not married, that's all right. You get you a good prayer prayer partner, and you just you agree as touching and come in agreement with them. Because that thing, he says, if any two shall agree on earth as touching anything, did you hear me? Any Matthew 18, 19, look it up if you think I'm lying. Anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them by God who's in heaven. Give the Lord some praise right there. That's about it. Eyes are closed. Saints are brave. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, how we love you and thank you and praise you. We just scratched the surface of <laughs> perhaps the most important series that we've ever embarked upon. We're taking the land. The greatest event of the Old Testament. Three million people had come out of slavery. So many of them had died off in the wilderness because of unbelief and fear and complaining and complaining. They had a complaining spirit not a thankful spirit. Yeah. They had just seen God part the Red Sea, Minister Darrell. And they were complaining, talking about where, where, where our water gonna come from? Where our bread gonna come from? What, uh, and what are you gonna do about them giants? So you don't trust me. You're not fully persuaded. But then came a generation it was led by Joshua. But it really was more than just the Joshua generation because really his generation had died off. It was a new, it was a combination of Joshua's leadership, but a new generation underneath him. And ones underneath them. And they were willing and they trusted the God of Joshua, the God of Moses. And they said, yes, we will. You may be here today and you don't know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior. This is your opportunity to trust the God of Moses, the God of Joshua, and most importantly, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God does not want you to just come out of an addiction. He does not want you to just come out of anger. He does not want you to just come out of sin. He wants you to come, come into abundance. He wants you to have abundant living. And he wants you to understand that abundant living, first and foremost, is based on a relationship, a living, loving, laughing relationship with God through Christ. If that's you and you don't have Christ in your heart, just repeat after me loud enough to be bold. Say with me, say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart be my Lord and Savior. And I will love you and serve you all the days of my life. In fact, forever. Because of this faith in you, I receive. I take the abundant life you promised me. In Jesus' name. 
Give God some praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I'm looking and seeing all born again believers here, but if, but if you out there receive the Lord for the very first time, contact us. Contact us here at the ministry. Please call us, and uh, we would love to talk with you and see how we can help you in your Christian walk. Praise the Lord. Well, praise God. Praise God. Would y'all stand to your feet? If you're able to. You know, uh, for those of you who know uh, what happened this week, there was some, they call it a mysterious smell. And it literally hovered right over the city of Carson. And it lasted at least for four days. And to be quite honest with you, when we came in here today, this whole place was filled with that smell because it got trapped in it. That smell was so uh, pungent and pervasive that it seeped inside. I smelled it inside my own house. We called everybody, the mayor, police, fire, and registered a complaint with South Coast Air Quality Management. And uh, everybody said they knew about it because many people had called but they weren't certain what the cause of it was. What, what's my point? Do you realize that that could have been toxic and we could all have wiped out like that? Just like that. You, you just never know what's gonna happen from one day to the next. That's why I say keep focus on being grateful and focus on serving the Lord. Um, and look what ends up happening. Even Romans 8, 28 still works with that. We, we, we walked in here, was smelling so bad. Only God could have provided us to be in a place where we could lift up the doors and let some fresh air come in. Give God some praise. That we we saved on air conditioning today. We didn't have to put the air on. We got the fans on, and we're getting some fresh air. Because I'm going to tell you, we walked in here. Karen was doing the Baptist tip. She was like, Pastor, I love you, but she was like, I'm going home. It, was, it, it really was making me sick. No, it was making me queasy. But thanks be to God. There it is again. The devil, the devil comes with opposition. We put a comma on him. We say, but God. But God has given us. <laughs> God has given us a door. God has opened a door. God in here today. God has opened a door where, where we can escape. A way of escaping. Let that fume get on out. If you're here and you uh, need a good church home, you'd like to join this church, uh, simply raise your hand. We'd love to take you in. If there's anybody here that would love to join the church, Arlanda says she wants to join all over again. I hear you, sister. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you, Rhonda. I'll, I'll rejoin myself, too. What a blessing. Well, we're going to have the, uh, the invocation, I mean, the, the benediction. And um, Pastor Robin, is there anything else that? Uh, oh, we we have some we have some uh, Mexican food for you all that we want to give you. So before you leave, is it to go back to go boxes? Right? Is it ready yet, Robin? Huh? It's almost ready. So don't leave out here. Let's leave them. It'll just go to waste. It's some rice, some beans, some shredded beef, and chicken enchilada. So it's dinner. Take some. She says dinner. Take some home. See one of the benefits you get from coming up. Now watch this. You got the hot food, and then over there, and over here you got cold food for your refrigerator during the week. So you got dinner and groceries. Come on now, what? <laughs> dinner and groceries, no charge. All right, let's uh, let's be dismissed. Father, we just bless you and praise you. This is such a beautiful thing to be um, in a relationship, in a love relationship with the Father through the Son, by the Holy Spirit and by faith. 
is, is more than good. It's even more than great. It's the best. It's the best. And we're so grateful for the best, the best love, the best daddy, the best relationship. Oh, Father, it reminds me of my little granddaughter coming up to me in the bed and just laying her head on my chest. <laughs> Thank you, Father. That all throughout the week and all throughout our lives, for the rest of our lives, we know that we have the best Father. And no matter what happens, we can come and lay our head on his bosom and he say, baby, everything. Give God some praise. God bless you. I love you in the name of Jesus. Glory. Don't forget to encourage somebody before you leave. <laughs>